Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about a comment that appeared in a recent forum, talking about how to deal with HP loans, anything when you actually buy something and going to pay for it in a later date. Join me and we look at the best ways to deal with this within QuickBooks Online. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trader with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, and also head of accounts here at Boffix. Now, in today's video, let's set the scene. Imagine you've just gone and bought yourself a nice fancy something. It could be a computer, a camera, it could be anything. But the thing is that instead of you buy, pay for it all in one go, you've spread the cost over, in this case, 12 months. Could be longer, could be shorter, but let's see how we can deal with that within QuickBooks Online. Well, the first thing to remember is we need to be making sure we've accounted for the asset itself. That's going to be issue number one. Now, that original purchase, there's going to be two ways to account for it. You can either deal with it as an expense, which you're probably more comfortable with, but if you are actually comfortable with using journal entries, then sometimes a nice journal entry can be a lot easier for you to be able to accomplish something like this. You see, let me just go through that journal entry for you first, just to give you a taste of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where you can use expenses and items that you may be more familiar with, which for most people I think will be the most sensible way of doing it. Let's have a look at journal entry first. Well, first of all, how do I get a journal entry? Well, at the top in the corner up here, I press new. From there, I go other and journal entry. And from here, I can say what date it was. I can say new asset as my journal number. Under attachments here, I definitely want to put in there that the actual item that I've paid for and any HP agreement or anything like that that goes with it. Let's say I bought a computer. Let's say it costs 2,500. But we've also got to take into account VAT. So let's say there was a VAT on it from there, but then how I paid for it, well, that's when you need to make sure you've created a new account. Now, technically, when you create this account, so let's call it HP Liability. Now, letter of the law, when you're creating a HP Liability account is really, you want to be going down and you want to be putting this against current liabilities and something like loan payable would be the right thing to choose to be able to put this through or line of credit something along those lines to show you how it's going to be done for this case though we're going to have to deal with it as a cash account and i'll explain why when we show number one if you're just doing journal entries in this case we're going to have to deal with it as a cash account for when we show you option number two but if you're just doing it as a journal entry i would definitely put it to your loan account your line of credit something like that just to keep it nice and clean and tidy Okay, so I've got my HP liability account. And let's say in this case, we had 3,000 pound of HP liability. And let's say in this case, that HP loan interest, let's put that as expenses, finance costs, HP loan interest, save and close. That way, what I've done is I've accounted for the computer edition equipment costs. So that's nice and exactly how I want it to be. I've shown there how I've got my HP liability of 3,000, then every time I make a payment towards that in my bank, I'd want to post it against that particular amount. And there's my HP loan interest sat there as well. So if I just wanted to use journal entries, this is how I can account for it. VAT and everything else is all done for. Save and close. I now have a liability account I can post against, make my life easier as I go forward. Now, again, if you're comfortable with using journal entries, that is probably the cleanest and easiest way of getting it done. But there is another way, and I'm going to show you that now. But if you're not comfortable with journal entries, then follow this option. So in this option, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into and put an expense. And remember, we made that expense a HP liability account, which was a cash account. And the fact we treated the cash account means we can make this expense against it. So let's say that I've gone out there and again, I've bought some computer equipment. 
And now I'm using my expense. I can even use it inclusive of tax if I want to. And let's say that it was actually 2,500 this time, 20% purchases. I can put my attachments there. It's gonna do my VAT for me properly. It's basically exactly how I'm comfortable with putting in most of my transactions in. And I can just press save and close. So at this point then, just so we can see exactly what's happened at the point, if I go to my reports, if we have a look at what's actually happened at this point, if I go to my balance sheet and look at my computer equipment, well, I've got both of those items in there. There was me paying it as an expense. There was me putting the transaction as an expense. There was me putting the transaction as a journal. Both ways, they've both shown me as an addition to QuickBooks and to my assets. So I'm happy with that. But in both ways as well, I now have a liability account. So if I go to my current liabilities, here's my HP liability too. There's that 3,000 we said about posting that against there. And then in this last one I've just done, I now have a HP liability account of 2,500 pounds. So what do I need to do next? Well, let's go and figure out what I'm gonna do for the banker. Again, in that first scenario, I would just post this against that HP liability account and I've already done it. I've accounted for my, my high purchase interest when I went through it as a journal entry, so everything would be absolutely fine. You'll see in this case, I have 12 payments ready to be allocated against that HP liability. So update exactly where we're going to. And in fact, because I've used it as a cash account, I can even transfer it so that when I put HP liability, apply and accept, it's gonna move all of those items to there. Now, I've cleared my bank, so I'm happy now my bank's been dealt with. I can now go to dashboard, get things done, look at my HP liability, and see what's happened over those 12 months. And as you can see, what's happened is that I've actually now got a difference of 300 and £11.24p and that is actually my interest that I've suffered on this deal so I can go in from this account I can add an expense I can say £311.24 I can say it's exempt for VAT purposes and I can say that's high purchase from there I can press save and now balanced off my account back to zero and I've been able to account for all of the payments that have gone through relating to me purchasing this item, me having the item in the beginning, and then everything coming through correctly. One key thing I would do if I was doing this properly though, is just be really mindful of this date here. Obviously this is the date when you first bought the item. In this case, I'd imagine it was around that April time. So just to absolutely make sure we get this right, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna put that against 1st of April, 2020 save and as you can see now my liability started when i bought that 2500 pound per computer i then pay it off pay it off pay it off pay it off and at the end i incur my interest per my agreement one bonus other option for you as well don't forget that if i just find any transaction here i do have the option to split here and I could use a rule for it. So if I knew that my interest was always going to be the same amount each and every time, I could put however much it needs to be against a capital item, against that HP liability, and I could split my interest off as I go along. I could create a nice little rule for that so it gets done automatically for me. I basically have loads of options if I really wanted to. Personally though, I like doing it where you put the whole amount into the control account because then you can see straight away all those control account payments being there. You can keep on top of it and you can make sure that everything's been accounted for correctly. So there we have it. As you can see, straightforward enough to be able to deal with HP liability transactions, anything where you're paying for it. Do be very, very, very careful on the whole way of doing this about the difference between HP higher purchase versus leasing. There's a whole different topic on this. In fact, it's a topic we've done over on the back of Office channel where you can see the difference between HP and leasing. Basically, do you account for it as a capital item or do you just write it off as an expense each and every month? Hopefully that's answered the question that we had originally. Remember the question was here. If you want one of your questions answered, then just keep posting them into the 
official QuickBooks forums. That's where I'm looking around at the moment and the comment section down below. If there's any questions that people are really coming up stuck with and having problems with, that's when I'm gonna get this video out for you guys. So if you want your questions answered, comments below, make sure you subscribe to make sure you see the answer. We've got some really good videos coming up with some extra enhancements to QuickBooks and also QuickBooks Connect is just around the corner. So I know for sure there's gonna be some great announcements. And if you're subscribed, you're gonna make sure you hear about Adam, making sure that you're making the most out of QuickBooks Online. My name has been Aaron Patrick. As always, been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. I'm sure I'm going to see you in the next video, and when that comes, I'll see you then. Bye for now. Cause I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we stay in bed My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live in Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description, but it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.